So let's start this webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to all of you joining us from uh, all over the world. This is an information session about the MBA in Global Hospitality Management taught at Le Roche Cremontana in Switzerland. My name is Diana Giudice. I'm part of the marketing team and I'll be um, hosting this webinar, but more in the behind the scenes uh, until the end. Um, before diving in the core program of this presentation, I thought I'd like to share with you in just a minute a few images of a part of what Les Roches stand for. Let's see. And we're back to our live presentation about the MBA program uh, in Cremontana. It's, um, it's always uh, interesting for us to share a little bit of uh, what Le Roche uh, stands for, to give you a taste uh, of what's behind the institution, the schools and our programs. Um, but before we dive really into the core program of this uh, webinar, um, I would like to remind you that you will be able to ask questions throughout the webinar using the chat box or the question box that should be located at the top or right hand side of your screen. So don't hesitate to type your questions and we'll really try to answer as many of them as possible throughout the webinar. It's uh, now a pleasure to introduce you to our first panelist that will present you the core curriculum of the MBA, our executive dean, Dr. Dimitrios Diamantis. Welcome. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here on Friday morning, afternoon in Switzerland, or in any other part of the time zones around the globe. My name is Dimitrios Diamandis. As you can see from my name, I'm originally Greek, and I have been actually, I had the pleasure to be in from 1989. I have studied and worked in the UK, my first place for almost 10 years and completed my PhD studies in the area of sustainability and ecotourism at Bournemouth University. I have joined the faculty of La Rose in the year 1999, and uh, I have started the MBA program in the year 2002, and I have managed to really the first phase of the program until the year 2007. Uh, I have returned back to the UK at Sefi Hallam University for three years as a senior lecturer. And then I have returned to the campus here in Switzerland in the year 2010. Uh, so the MBA and myself, we have uh, almost 20 years of relationship. And as a result of that, actually, it's given me a great pleasure to share the insights, as well as actually uh, the experiences that we have to the current format. It's also a pleasure to introduce you my fellow panelists, and I will pass over to Patrick for your introductions. Oh, oh Mr. Suridis oh, first. Mr. Suridis. Mr. Suridis first. Mr. Suridis is actually our head of the career team and a former MBA alumni. Mr. Suridis, my apologies, and over to you. Thank you, Dr. Diamantis, and uh, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, or good evening, depending on the uh, destination where you're located at this stage. So, first of all, uh, my name is Augustinos. I come from Greece and Belgium. I've been in the career services department for the last six years, and uh, I'm leading the department during this period. So I would be happy to reply to any type of questions which relate to labor, employment, and uh, all the relevant uh, information to be delivered to you today. 
Now, I have uh, been working for 25 years across the public sector, the private sector, in a big international organization, and also in plenty of other things. And uh, this is why I believe that uh, I'm someone who can uh, give you a lot of uh, important insights about the international uh, labor and employment reality. Moreover, I'm at the final year of completing a doctorate focused on labor, employment, uh, global crisis and disasters. So exactly what we live at this stage is uh, in my uh, waters so that we find the best uh, ways to support the talents and move things forward. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be with you today. I appreciate your time and involvement and I will pass the microphone to Patrick. All right, thank you, Mr. Saridas. Um, I'm Patrick Finacaro. I am currently an MBA one student here at La Roche, and I am from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, a little bit about my background. Uh, I actually did go to Endicott College and received my Bachelor's of Science in Hotel Management that's located in Beverly, Massachusetts. I studied abroad here at La Roche with a study abroad program um, back in 2018. Uh, and then from there, I went forward to work with Four Seasons in the sales and marketing department uh, where I, I did my internship. And then from there, I moved on to Wynn Resorts Limited, opened up uh, the Encore Boston Harbor in Boston, Massachusetts, a 671 key um, hotel uh, and worked in travel industry sales and group sales there. And then from there, I went um, into a corporate event planning um, position. Uh, and then um, from there, I have since created my own company, property management company and hotel development company. We are in the very beginning, uh, my business partner and I, of creating that. However, um, returning to La Roche from my MBA um, was going to assist me in getting to the next step with um, my business. So I decided to take the year um, due to COVID and to come here to back to La Roche and uh, go ahead and um, pass on now to Johnny. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Ni hao, good evening from Shanghai, China. My name is Johnny, I'm the MBA alumni class of 2020. I graduated last year in January. Uh, just introduce a little bit about my background. Uh, I did my bachelor in uh, hospitality management in Beijing then I work in the Four Seasons Hotel as corporate MIT and work in the Peninsula Hotel, both in Beijing, Shanghai, and Tokyo. Then I started to, I started to pursue my further education in Le Rush and uh, MBA is an amazing program. I did MBA last year and after MBA, I work in the consulting company as project manager for a time. And now I work in the Melania Hotel and Groups and the uh, Greater China office as a corporate level in charge of the qualities. And please uh, to answer all the questions regarding the program and the post-study life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Patrick. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Suri. This, um, oh, yep. Yep. Thank you to the four of you. Uh, this is really uh, exciting to have you uh, all on board for this uh, webinar. So you now know our great panelists. Uh, let see uh, who our audience is. So you're going to see a little poll appearing on your screen. Um, this is just for us to understand a little bit uh, who you are. And um, Dr. Diamantis, while we wait for the audience to answer the, uh, this little poll, um, what do you think is the, the, the perfect profile for a program such as the MBA? Uh, I would say there's not a perfect profile, but we can make it perfect. Uh, so, so that will mean that we we are really open to to backgrounds and educational backgrounds, rather from the business as well as actually from other kinds of industries. Uh, the program is a, it's a program that exists for about 20 years, and as a result of that, it brings a lot of experience as well as actually a lot of the MBA alumni community. Are the students that make it also perfect? So having actually profiles like Johnny's, like Patrick's, like Mr. Sue, read this in the source of the MBA, that helps a lot really for the experience that we give to the students. Uh, so that's my short answer, yep. <laughs> what, what's the typical, I mean, I guess you, you just mentioned it, there's no uh, yeah. general, uh, what, what are the typically the objectives that lead, uh, when you talk to MBA students, that lead them to choose uh, this, uh, 
study path? Yeah, the, for the MBA, really, we uh, the, we try really to make them a specialist in the field of hospitality and hospitality sharing economy. So the whole idea is really for them to have, of course, the hospitality etiquette and the understanding of the hospitality sector, but really to be to be a very good observer and understanding of the of the changing trends within our industry and can be able really to adapt well into this particular kind of change. Uh, so the MBA program will take them through different kinds of course, different kinds of subjects that I will be explaining. But in reality, really to make them all these kinds of 360 degree all, all rounder that they can be able really also to gain the skills uh, that they can apply them directly to the sector that we are, tourism and hospitality, but ultimately also beyond the sector in terms of transferability. Okay, thank you all for answering uh, this little poll. Are you surprised by the results, uh, Dr. Diamantis? No, I'm not. I'm not. I am not surprised at all. Uh, yeah, um, not. I'm not surprised. Uh, they, they are current entrepreneurs or business owners. Uh, they are hospitality professionals as well as actually very nice to see also students that they are currently studying and looking ahead, and they like to further their advancements in terms of education. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the slides. Um, and the distribution has been absolutely perfect at 33% for each category. <laughs> but, and I think that the, one of the, the majesties of the MBA program, now I will speak with my second hat as a Leros MBA graduate. I think one of the majesties of the program is this uh, diversity. So as it happened in this poll, this is exactly what I experienced also uh, in the classroom. And I had the opportunity to exchange uh, mindsets and experience with uh, many classmates from different nationalities. We were uh, 34 from uh, 20 different nationalities uh, back then, which was very interesting. Uh, Johnny and exactly Patrick, I'm right. sure that you have experienced as well the same, yeah, ex right? Exactly right, exactly right, yeah. So guys, uh, uh, the, the MBA program uh, belongs really to the portfolio within our graduate school. Now, uh, why terminology matters? It matters a lot, and that actually matters in terms of the accreditation. So we got actually the MBA accredited independently after the Nietzsche. As a result, actually, on that one, we can be given the rights to develop a graduate school. Uh, so that graduate school now has a portfolio of different programs the MBA that we'll be talking about it today, the postgraduate diploma in international hospitality management that is a bridge really also to the second semester of the MBA, and our newly created program about a year old now, the Master in Hospitality Strategy and Digital Transformation. So, so if we're moving to the next slide, you will see that the next the MBA program is accredited really by the New England. Commission of Higher Education. This is actually very close really to where you, Patrick, you are from. It's actually the uh, surrounding area actually of the New England that I'm sure that a lot of uh, colleges and institutions in this part of the world, they are accredited by this uh, historical association. It's actually one of the oldest accreditation bodies in the world with a lot of history and tradition on that. And that gives us really the tone that we need to use really into the accreditation process of the MBA. That gives us actually two kinds of directions. Number one, to employ faculty that they have the academic hat as well as the applied perspective. And ultimately to open, if, if you like, the MBA program and the curriculum to projects that they also have a very much real life flavor. Uh, Patrick didn't really, uh, did any applied projects as for now, but uh, Johnny actually did and Mr. Suridis also did during his time uh, with his second hat uh, that we are not going to use a lot, but but he did actually for for that particular kind of time. So they are very kind of research-based kind of programs. Uh, by research-based means applied research projects that we try to showcase to you at a later stage. So to the MBA skeleton itself, we are looking. I mean, uh, we are looking really for individuals that they can have the appreciation. Uh, that uh, the society and industry really is changing day by day. So as a result of that, we are aiming really for forward-looking uh, potential students 
that again, we can enhance their skills and their perspectives. So the program really has three components. Component number one, for those that they don't have hospitality background, they do a two week kind of course called HIP that I will explain in the next slide. Then, and the two academic semesters of the MBA. So if we'll go actually to the HIP program, the HIP program, the hospitality immersion program, is a two week preparatory course for those students that they don't have the hospitality experience. So if they don't have any hospitality experience, we're asking them to do a two week course that is basically a combination of academic and practical courses. It has mostly a, a practical course application in our restaurants called Roots, uh, mm -hmm. that during the second week, they will be in the food and beverage outlets so they can practice really their hospitality skills on a week long kind of practice. Uh, and also we, we, we have another week that is dedicated to an understanding of hotel operations in general. Uh, to the skeleton now of the MBA program. So once the, for those students that are entering now directly to the MBA or the ones that are after the, uh, the HIP, they going really to the first semester of the MBA program. Before I will go to Patrick and ask him for his experience, I'm just going only to share to you the three headlines that we aiming to achieve from the first academic semester of the MBA. Number one, to improve the leadership skills of the students. How? By, by sharing three courses dedicated to leadership. Personal leadership, as well as leadership to the organization that the students are aiming to work. So the personal development leadership skill class, as well as the managing complex organization and change management, a human resourcing and talent management, those three courses are dedicated to leadership as a sort of notion and applicability. Then you also have the second category of subjects that is the backbone of any business for hospitality, as well as actually on experiential economy. So uh, you have assets on finance, revenue, digital marketing, consumer behavior, economics, that they're adding really, if you like, the backbone of the business. So this is really the second category. And the third and the most important is how you glue all this together. And you glue all this to, together by going to a study trip in order really for them to see in a live classroom. So we're visiting a destination and they see different brands, different kind of uh, players in the sector. So they can be able really also to learn from them how everything applies on a live classroom environment in a real world. So all these three together, we aiming really to shock is the foundation of the business administration during the first semester. So over to you, Patrick, how was your experience so far? It, uh, and what do you have learned? What do you have enjoyed most? And ultimately, how did your previous experience really has been added extra layers as a result of your current experience of the MBA? Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Diamantes, for the overview there. Um, so yes, I, I'm currently halfway through um, the MBA, MBA One program, and so far the experience has been fantastic. Um, I arrived uh, back in early March, uh, and we began the program somewhere around, I believe, mid-March, March 16th area, and um, already the amount of knowledge that um, I have gained and just the different perspective um, that I have gained so far through all of these different classes, whether it's from you know leadership and, and human resources that gives a little bit more of an academic um, look at the industry through academia and reading literature, um, that has um, been very beneficial. And then we go into that second layer, you know, revenue management, finance, consumer behavior, and essentially all of the classes culminate together to create a holistic knowledge and experience of looking at the industry. Um, through a new lens. Um, we talk a lot about change management, uh, which is a, a, a theme that goes throughout all of the courses. Um, and this is something very beneficial moving forward, especially after um, the most recent um, pandemic, um, because the industry does certainly needs uh, a different uh, perspective um, in approaching it that way. And Leroche's MBA is certainly setting that up um, wonderfully because uh, right now it's a time of adaptation and um, certainly the courses are preparing us for that. Um, so that's definitely an aspect that I've really enjoyed. Um, and to answer your second question, Dr. Diamantis, about how it's changed my perspective, 
um, it certainly has um, created a bit more awareness about how um, the digital era is creating um, a lot of differences um, and digitalization and adaptation to the new generation is going to be something very important. Um, and also that we're going to be the new pioneers that essentially will be revolutionizing this industry. Um, so all of these classes and, and the, um, the faculty um, that teach them, they have a fantastic uh, amount of knowledge that they're able to share with us. And they challenge us. It's not classic memorization. It's more, here's the models. How can you adapt them based off of your own personal brand um, and apply them to the industry um, in, in projects and papers and such? So. Um, I'm excited every day when I wake up in the morning. It's something different every day. It's something new, um, and it it you know it keeps you on your toes and certainly um, prepares you to think in a different way. Um, and uh, yes, it's been a great experience so far, and certainly looking forward to our study trip next month and um, the next semester as well. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions once we do open to that portion. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. And actually, the study trip is a very, very important element that we are planning for this semester, really, the study trip here in Switzerland for about nine days, uh, all whole duration. But during the time of the MBA one, I were, about two years ago, I was excited to have Johnny uh, in the class because he comes from the peninsula, uh, one of my most respected brands in the hospitality. And ultimately, he um, he did actually in Shanghai. So, we had the study trip in China at that time. Uh, so, so Johnny, you can share with us your experience of MBO1, of course, at that time that you have done it, most importantly as well, the study trip experience uh, and what else gave you as a result of that? Thank you, Dr. D. Uh, I'm pleased to talk about our study trip. It's definitely one of the highlights of the program. And I'm Chinese, I'm basically coming from China, but as a, uh, Foreigner students, you work, you study in Switzerland, then you go to two most top destination. One is Shanghai, representing the Asian hospitality industry. One in Chicago, representing the traditional American industry. I think it's very interesting. So we went to Shanghai and uh, Chicago. We actually visiting different level of hotel. We're visiting a luxury segment hotel like a Peninsula, like a Four Seasons. We also visiting the very young brand like a Sokotai Hotel, Middle House, those lifestyle brand. We as well as we also to visiting some very major company like uh, Booking.com, and we even go to the local university to to study their courses. I think it's definitely very beneficial for everybody from different backgrounds. You learn very different culture, especially. Asian hospitality is very different. Uh, things in China, things in Shanghai, it's growing very fast. And uh, on another hand, you go into the U.S., we see very different hospitality behavior as well. In the U.S., um, you have uh, compared to China, you have uh, uh, the rules for giving people tips, and you have the labor union to actually in the between of the hotel and uh, employees. I think it's very uh, very interesting and also uh, actually broaden our horizon to have a global mindset to see how different level and how how to engage with different customers. And also very interesting for us and also very beneficial for us is to connect with industry leaders. That's, uh, that's really valued connection for us when we go to the study trip we meet with all the GMs, we meet with all the executive level uh, communities in the hotel and the human resources. We hear their successful stories. We hear about the, how they study, how they to challenge themselves in the industry in very difficult and challenging time. And we made a lot of valued connections during the trip. That's for me when I come back to China, when I come back to Shanghai, I already have very valuable connections for me to looking for the jobs and not even looking for the jobs, but also you have certain connections in the city that really help you to grow yourself in the industry. So I think the study trip is definitely highlight the people you meet, the hotel you visited, 
the experience you had and uh, the, the, the everything you have been through is shape a different mindset, shape a global mindset for you. And it's never, you, you never put money on it. It's one of the unique experience for me and I will have a chance if I, if I can do it again. Thank you yeah, very absolutely. much, Dr. D. Thank you, Johnny, and I will see you very soon. I hope by the end of the year when everything is actually back on track so we can visit actually Shanghai. And that's actually quite important, as you said, big B, because hospitality, environments and lifestyle, traditional, and also new and dynamic. It's a modern city, Shanghai. It's actually, um, you know, a fast paced, etc., etc. And that's really the symbolisms that we also want to pass to the MBA students. So to the second semester of the MBA, we take a very corporate kind of outlook. We are asking the students really to study the four core subjects of, um, if you like, corporate life. That means business strategies, corporate finance, data analytics, and sustainability. So those are actually the four core. And then we're asking them to choose a specialization. And the specialization can be either on the left, that is really advanced revenue and performance management, that's really the whole notion of real estate investment and food and beverage revenue management, and wrapped up with one applied project. Or they can choose the second specialization that is based on entrepreneurship, and that's really business modeling and entrepreneurial mindset. That really goes from the design thinking to family business, as, as well as actually to the financial. And another applied project that really also gives them a second layer um, of applicability in terms of the projects that we are doing. So, so the second semester, again, is a, it's a, bit of my, a little bit more higher level, higher tone, more intensity, simply because also of the applied pro projects and the demands are really of the clients that we are having in terms of uh, their expectations from the MBA students. Um, so, so Johnny, what was the project that you have done during the MBA to applied projects? Do you remember at that time? Yeah, I think during MBA 2, I did a project with destination management. Uh, we actually thinking from corporate side to actually develop the, the destination and uh, we standing from government side to to thinking it's how to from stakeholder interest to develop the whole destination i think it's super interesting this is one of my favorite project i did in mba2 uh because you you actually beyond the management side you work with others to thinking it's more deeper kind of um the strategy Exactly right, exactly right. So so with the applied research projects, really, thank you, Johnny, the applied research projects and as we started from the year 2012. So so we have around actually 90 years now of applied research projects. And what is the difference, if you like, between us and other programs or other schools is that we are trying to observe really the strengths and weaknesses of our MBA students during the first semester. And we try really to discover as, an, as a faculty team, as an, as an academic institution, to see actually what will be the projects that will maximize the, the strengths and minimize these weaknesses. So as a result of that, it means that the projects are not given for a project sake, but they are given really to upskill the students, uh, to challenge them to areas that they can be able also to develop skills that they can take them to the real world environment. So, uh, so we also, Patrick, uh, with your MBA one class, we already have a very, very clear idea of the amazing etiquette that you guys are having right now during the MBA one that gives us the confidence that the applied research projects for next semester can be on a very, very high level and very high tone. Uh, so over the years, we have done it with New York Times, with Peninsula Hotels, with the Four Seasons, with a cor co corporate, with Colliers during the time of Mr. Suridi's time. Uh, Colliers International was um, a, a real estate and investment firm that advises hospitality on real estate matters. So ultimately that gives us really the confidence uh, of the quality that we have in the classroom uh, to go really on this kind of nature and high level kind of projects that they can be able really to challenge the students. So in the next uh, slides, uh, we'll also have this kind of wrap up, if you like, about the reflections 
that we had about the study trip. So during the second semester, we normally used to go and we're planning to go this year uh, to Chicago. And during the first semester, uh, we used to go to Shanghai, China. But again, the destination is just the destination. Uh, the most important thing is the methodology of the, the, the trip, the brands that you're going to see. We are visiting a lot of global brands uh, with locations, not only in Shanghai, but ultimately in Switzerland. So this year, we are also planning the study trip next month in Switzerland with a lot of uh, dynamic and interesting brands um, ranging from the Hyatt's to other organizations like IFA, Olympic Committee, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of exciting things are happening uh, so that the MBA students can also learn and uh, not only from the leaders and the brands, but most importantly, uh, skills that they need to be actually applied in the real world environment after their graduation. Uh, if you like to follow the historical trips, uh, Chicago and Shanghai, there are the, the, the dedicated kind of YouTube videos and I think we can afford to play one video right now, Diana, over here in terms of the time, or we can advise them real. Yes, we, we can. Excellent. The number one is to improve the soft skills of the students. The number two is to showcase them the different facets of the hospitality industry. The number three, to inspire them. And the number four, to make them, if you like, a more of a reflective practitioner. learning how to apply like the different things that we're learning which I think is one of the main reasons obviously for this Chicago trip um, really taking the things that we learn in the classroom and how they work in real life and maybe things don't work out exactly like they're supposed to but how to adapt to different situations and really how to be flexible Yeah, excellent. Uh, very, uh, yeah, very interesting exp experiences. And again, the idea is really to go to the branch and uh, go to the live classroom. So the GMs and the management team, are the instructor, the hotels, are the case, the interaction is really there to also explore the soft skills of the students and so on. So as far as our admission criteria and our ideal profile, although we try to answer this question earlier on but really is uh, we aiming uh, of educating students in order for them to become a success story uh, that they can be able not only for them to go to the senior positions but for them to be super successful who and they are entering into the hospitality and beyond so ultimately we kind of know what success means from our really experience with mba alumni now from 20 Years, and we are seeking really also to, to pass this kind of knowledge and experience to our current cohort of the students. For admission requirements, uh, there is a minimum age of 23, and of course, a bachelor's degree with some years of experience to enter into the MBA program. So, so the next slide is going to actually also to reflect the notion of the current circumstances. So currently, we are still living in a COVID times, although the world is improving day by day uh, but we, we have really three models of delivery of the mba program and the programs of our school here in Grand montana uh, first of all a hundred percent face to face so students can stay in our residential accommodation so they can be able really to attend the classes face to face or they can study remotely from the place that they are seeking and then they can really follow the class live every day uh, through the remote experience and they can join us when they feel ready for the live classroom or they can go 100% remote experience with the requirement of course of engagement uh, with a class with a projects and follow up really of what are the happenings in the MBA program. So three flexible models of, the of delivery, we call them high flex. 
So, and the next kind of concept I think is touching the career um, and really on the career of the MBA, it's a dear subject. Is It is a subject that the MBA is really, they are coming here to be transformed. So ultimately from the career perspective, Mr. Shu, read this, uh, the floor is yours for your reflections. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Diamantis. So I will start by uh, drawing a line here so that you understand that uh, on the one hand, during the studies, on the one hand, there is the academic part, which is the most important. And can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, all right. So on the one hand, there is the academic set of things, the modules, the projects, also the uh, business trip, which is extremely important, and uh, all the applied uh, research as well. On the other hand, we have the career matters and the career reality, which is closely observed and supported by the career services department. So the academic side with the career side work very closely so that we make sure that you get the most out of both sides and so that you move on uh, in the best way towards the completion of your studies. Now for I MBA, it, yeah, I'm I, sorry. I, I, I think absolutely before you will carry on, Agustino will give the floor to Diana. Diana, you have a surprise for us, correct? <laughs> It was just, I thought, uh, as a way to introduce your section, uh, Bustinos, it would be nice also to uh, to show a little video, which is uh, basically uh, um, a mashup of small interview bits uh, that were taken from uh, interviews we had with uh, employers that recruit at La Roche, as we wanted to understand why our students are a good fit for their brands. We want those students to be part of our success. The quality of education and the training in the soft skills in La Roche is pretty impressive. I absolutely adore the students. They just stand out amongst the crowd. Entrepreneurial spirit. Humility. Thinking outside of the box. Problem solving. They are our future leaders. We need unique people to, to fill in the roles. We need the best of the best. Right, thank you very much, uh, Diana, for this video. And uh, indeed, we are in uh, very, very close contact with the industry. We speak with uh, hundreds of organizations uh, during uh, each semester. We have thousands of contacts globally because Leros is a very well-established name since 1954 and it has proven its value uh, throughout the years continuously and repetitively and this is what uh, we continue to do. So we keep uh, receiving uh, positive feedback by the employers. On the other hand, we are always curious in asking them if they would suggest uh, any improvement or if they can see any trend in the industry which can influence the uh, employment uh, related uh, reality and of course we take the right action so that we are always ahead of the game so each semester we have the career day this is a very big event uh, organized on campus now because of the pandemic it occurred twice uh, virtually but uh, hopefully very soon we will be back in the physical event and uh, just uh, two weeks ago we, we welcomed uh, 95 organizations from international locations uh, the students have been very well, very well prepared. They took the best advantage of the career day, which, however, is not the only event for someone to uh, look for a job, for his placement after the graduation. So it's very important from the beginning of the studies to remain in very close contact with the career services, to base and cre to create an honest and transparent relationship between us so that we know uh, where each student stands. And then we move forward together until the completion of the studies and uh, hopefully the signature of the best uh, possible contract. Well, what we can see in this slide is uh, some different names that we cooperate with. Uh, I'm sure that you know many of them. Uh, in the middle, a little bit on the right, we have the Black Sheep uh, restaurants. A very, very strong and successful business in Hong Kong, expanding very soon internationally. On the top right, we have uh, a tech uh, player, the Mu Systems, which is based in Prague and now in London and will also move on more internationally. Of course, the key brand names uh, within the hotel, the hotel uh, sector, like uh, Four Seasons, uh, Accor, Rosewood, 
many more. And then MCI, the events uh, company, global player as well for corp corporate events and any type of events. And also Everland for hotel developers, de developers, managers, and um, a very strong player located also in uh, Belgium with the uh, international uh, projects running simultaneously. So these are uh, employ some of the employers that we have a close uh, cooperation with, but of course there are many more and our overall approach is not just to direct students towards specific organizations, but really to develop the right mindset so that the student can also take his own uh, steps or her own steps and move towards different organizations of his her preference. So it's really a question of developing the right mindset. It's really a question of uh, developing the right approach. And this is why the uh, applied projects and also the business trips are critical because uh, there is uh, enough space for someone to reflect, challenge his uh, past knowledge, adapt certain uh, skills, qualities, competencies, and then move forward towards uh, breaking the ice for employment purposes as well. Now, in this slide, you can see some of the uh, so, some of the services that we extend as career services department. First of all, we do not base the interaction uh, with the students only on a strict appointment basis. So we have an open door policy. Uh, any student can contact us or visit us at any moment. One of us will leave exactly uh, will leave uh, what he or her uh, or he or she is doing, so that we spend the right uh, needed time with the individual. Of course, appointments also can happen. And we are also available 24 times seven because we have a few hundreds of uh, students who are placed internationally, either for internships or for management training contracts, uh, even full-time jobs at the begin at, at the end uh, of the studies. And we remain available for them uh, no matter the time or the distance uh, barriers. Now we spoke a little bit about the career day. We also have an online job portal which is named Simplicity. This is a very strong tool. It connects the industry with the students. So the industry can post the different openings which exist and keep coming. And then the students can see on the other side uh, what's in the menu and then uh, apply for the vacancies that they are uh, eligible to work or that they, they are strong enough and they have the right skill set to apply for. There's a big variety of uh, different options uh, being them internships, management trainings, full-time jobs, and all these vacancies move across industries and disciplines. That's why uh, someone really needs to keep investigating because uh, the educational journey is a transition period as well. And it would be a pity at the end of the studies to realize that, hey, you know what, I was too much focused on that particular uh, industry and I missed opportunities to explore others. Uh, I will tell you an example. Uh, we have a very close uh, cooperation with Bloomberg. Bloomberg is the strongest uh, financial distributor, financial information distributor globally. If someone does not he see himself or herself uh, within uh, this type of organization in finance, fair enough. But to take the opportunity to follow one of our workshops or recruitment events that we organize on a weekly basis and exchange with these officers, even to tell them that, look, you know what, I don't see myself in Bloomberg, but I would like to understand what is your opinion? Here is my CV, do you see me fitting? And if so, in which department? Because this type of uh, alternative industries and different businesses, they have identified the high value of the, uh, uh, of the social skills of the foreign languages that uh, our students speak, which, uh, which are so many. The over 100 nationalities that we have uh, on campus each semester. And these are critical uh, components for uh, the organizational success. In the careers department, I come from Greece and Belgium. Stephanie comes from Spain and Holland. Laila comes from Egypt and the UK. Uh, Christina comes from uh, Malaysia. And then Gaia comes from Italy. So, and each one comes with a different skill set, a different background, and this is exactly how we do things uh, in the best way possible because we keep comparing, contrasting, and exchanging productively for the best uh, operational uh, outcome. Now, we have also an online interview coach, uh, Ms. Gillian Lana. She's an outstanding player. Now she's in, uh, in Australia. Of course, the experience that she delivers and the knowledge has been intact uh, during the pandemic. 
very soon she will be back because normally she is physically on campus for specific weeks to support the students. Uh, this is also a, a fantastic service that uh, all students can uh, uh, enjoy dur during the semesters. And then uh, something which is outstanding and often underestimated is the following. So the Career Services Department is dedicated in supporting the registered students. After the end of the semester, the alumni department takes over and supports the career journey of the graduates. However, here at La Rose, we have something very unique because during the last semester, so in this case, during the MBA 2, the students are already uh, embedded to the alumni department. So during the last semester, the students have double support, which overlaps between the career services and the alumni department. And notice also this one, right after the graduation, the career services department remains for another semester supporting the students with all the tools, the mechanisms, and the contact that uh, we have with them. So we're talking about uh, the MBA one, when the career services is responsible, then MBA two, career services and alumni, one semester after graduation, career services and alumni, and then off to the alumni without, of course, meaning that if we receive uh, an email, we would not act uh, or we would not extend any uh, exceptional uh, support because uh, Leros is a family. This is what uh, really differentiates it. Then an additional element is the mentoring program, which is developed, has been developed uh, by the alumni department. So the registered students also have the opportunity to be mentored and exchange views with real uh, officers out in real organizations so that they cross check where they stand, what is the industry's uh, opinion and productively reflect so that they move on uh, throughout the, their career journey. Exactly Overall, right. I yeah, yeah, exactly right. Just like to add uh, a touch point of very here about the mentorship program because we have one of the strengths, uh, as Mr. Solidis have, have have mentioned from 1954, one of the strengths really of the of the La Roses, the alumni community. And considering a guy like me, I came here from 1999, so 22 years, I know a lot of alumni, a lot of the students I came through actually my classes and so on. So ultimately, what we wanted to do is to put a mentorship program to the students during the academic semester of study. So the alumni team in our UK office uh, in London took up the lead and they developed actually through Otolo, that is a, a platform, a matching process between students and mentors. Now, the mentors can be within the hospitality, the mentors can be experiential economy, and mentors are really uh, individuals with experience of the industry, that they can be able to really also to advise the students on a dialogue outside really the confinement of our school and our services. That gives them, if you like, a platform to do something different. And now those mentors can be alumni, of course, but those mentors also are not alumni because it opens up actually to the wider hospitality experiential eco economy. So we try through different methods to give the platform to the students really to get the right skills uh, during the year on the academic as well as actually on the career support. Mr. Suridis, before I will pass over to Johnny and to Patrick for their right. reflections, anything, any last words that you like to, to share right. with us? Just the last uh, thought that I wanted to share and then uh, pass it with a question actually to Patrick and Johnny is the following. For us as career services, an MBA student is not a student, he's a colleague. All right, so I can see an MBA student as an experienced professional who is going through a high-end training program to move on with his, her career further. All right, and this is the relationship that we develop with the students. On the other hand, we expect an MBA student to take personal initiative, use our tools, use our mechanisms, and visit us. And I would like to ask John and uh, Patrick, let's let's ask, uh, let's uh, start by Patrick. Uh, what's your experience with the career services and uh, if uh, you find relevance in uh, my input, uh, please? So for career services, uh, one of the things that I actually utilized was Jillian Lana's um, interview service um, that we that we do offer that you offer here, um, and I will say that um, she's incredible, and that's an incredible uh, partnership that we have. It was um, so great to hear her feedback and 
Um, and, you know, as somebody who is starting their own business, um, you know, she gave me feedback and it was very personalized as, it, as if I was going to go in front of a board of investors and what have you. Um, so she she was very, very, very good with this. Um, in addition, um, uh, you've also been very helpful specifically with the with the designing of the resume. Um, you know, the resume is always changing. It's always evolving. And um, the Career Center um, is very helpful with this, um, specifically with the arrangement of the resume and what have you. And, um, you know, as times have changing now, you know, the way that you present the information on the resume is very paramount. So um, those are sort of my two uh, most notable um, usages of the of the Career Center, for sure. Thank, Thank you. you, Patrick. And you, Johnny, what has been your experience with the Career Services? Uh, I really want to highlight about Sarah from Career Center because she's really helpful for me to find in the job, uh, especially for, um, for my case, I have several time, um, several years of experience. Then after MBA, really looking for the the changing of the career. And she helped me to actually connect with the alumni in the uh, San Francisco. So uh, it's very hard for me to really apply directly, but with the alumni connections, we actually connect with the director people. And afterwards, I basically, I got a job in San Francisco, in Rosewood the hotel. And especially uh, also holding the uh, management uh, position, that's very, very valuable for me. And another thing I want to highlight about alumni platform, since I came back to China because of pandemic, um, it's very hard to find a job, especially uh, not hotels not looking for the, the people because they doing the cost efficient. Uh, then I would actually join the alumni event and uh, I explained my uh, experience and I did MBA in Switzerland, uh, Le Roche. So uh, we, I basically got introduced with the Edition Hotel in Shanghai, uh, the director of rooms from uh, Le Roche. So she, he recommended me to another company, consulting company. And after interview, they even created a position for me as a project manager. If I don't, if I don't uh, take MBA program, I only have operations experience that couldn't hold the position like project manager because I did a lot of group project and even individual researches after MBA. I think it's really helpful for me to do in the career change. Um, afterwards, now I work in the Milania Hotels Group in China. Um, so basically it's also refer from the alumni to really give us a direct connections and, uh, and the internal refer. So I think alumni platform is really, really helpful for um students after the studies or you pass a uh, post the student uh, student's life that's super important for you connecting with our alumni in the industry also for uh some internal refer for the jobs and uh, and industry news so i think it's really really uh, important and now i'm also leading the alumni communities in china both help um the leon and the Roche, uh, alumni communities so we also help the students after graduate. We help them to find the jobs, and we have a lot of connections in the in in the city. We have more than um, 300 alumni already in the WeChat group, and we have more than uh, I think 40 people holding executive level uh, positions in the hotel. We even have 20 uh, GMs in the group and the vice president. I think that's really valuable. For the uh, students who graduate from Le Roche, we give the direct uh, connections, we give the internal job offer to help them to continue to work in the industry and uh, and providing the help uh, for all the aspects. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Johnny. Really valuable your input. And uh, likewise, uh, Patrick, thank you very much. And very soon you will be the recruiters. Uh, yeah, coming back to the school as uh, recruiters to find the best talents for your uh, future operations. So absolutely, absolutely, and I remember actually quite fondly the events in Shanghai for the alumni community. Absolutely huge, absolutely big, very kind of highly engaged as well when they return uh, to the mainland. So and ultimately they speak uh, 
also quite funnily from our school even after the graduation so ultimately and that actually adds actually to the experience and that's actually also the strength the strength of the mba and la Rosse in general so yes for sure you will be challenged in a nice way during the, your academic semesters in order really to try to question status quo and can be able actually also develop innovative ideas that you can apply them actually in the real world we're respecting tradition and that means actually because we do so we are very kind of open to entrepreneurship and to innovation uh, so that means actually we are reflective professionals so ultimately it means that uh, during the course of the study of the two semesters we try to educate the students so they can be able really to question the status quo without disturbing tradition, but at the same time being innovative and entrepreneurial in terms of what they are going to seek to achieve. And for sure, uh, and that's absolutely our guarantee, uh, that means because of our 20 years of existence of the MBA, we have a lot of MBA alumni stories that we like to engage our current students so they can grow also in terms of their skills and in terms of their activities academic and practical performance uh, so those are actually those kind of keywords to summarize the presentation uh, any takeaway uh, mr suridi johnny and patrick that you like to give to leave to our audience uh, any last words of wisdom advice reflections and then we start slowly and steadily to close the webinar uh, mr suridi the floor is uh, yours all right, so from my side, uh, my best advice for an MBA student is to show trust to the system, show trust to the mechanisms, and make sure that uh, he, she uses all the tools and the mechanisms which are suggested until the last day on campus. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, for last word, I want to say, first of all, thank you, uh, Dr. D, and thank you, Leroche, give me the opportunity to um, did my MBA. It's very valued for me um, to pursue the higher education, and also, um, really, I have the uh, global mindset and critical thinking. It's really helped me to level it up in the industry, and also, uh, alumni platform is really helped for the graduates. It's really valued tool for us to really connect with the people so i think i recommend everybody to do the mba and uh, if you come to china we are very uh, very much happy to connecting with the students after graduating and uh, you will never be bored with us it's uh, it's way of life thank you thank you john patrick thank you Thank you. And um, I would say, uh, specifically from an entrepreneurial standpoint, um, the Le Roche MBA certainly um, does take you to the next level. And even being an MBA one um, and haven't yet gone to MBA two yet, where I will specialize in, in the entrepreneur side, I've already learned so much um, and so many takeaways. It's the Le Roche MBA is what's going to take you to the next level uh, in regard to thinking through um, different different ways to approach the industry and um you know now it's about innovation and it's about approaching it in new creative ways and uh it certainly challenges you to think that way so um highly recommend it and um, i'm certainly enjoying my time so i'm sure everyone else um, would if they uh if they do choose to come thank you thank you thank you and over to you diana for the closing quotes of today thank you dr diamantis I'll take advantage uh, of the few minutes uh, remaining um, to follow up with, with a couple of questions. The first one being, is the MBA full-time or does it enable to have work experience or internships uh, in the program? Well, I guess that's an easy one. So the MBA is a full year of studies on campus. Included the, it, this includes the two field trips but it's two full academic semesters on campus or remotely if you cannot uh, join the campus uh, for the beginning of the semester. Exactly Another right. And only to add, actually only, only to touch point, if the question relates to the internship, the route really is the PGD program because the PGD program, uh, the PGD program has an intensive component and that also lands you in case you wish to the second semester of the MBA.
Thank you. Another question is um, why choosing an MBA instead of another master in hospitality, for example? That's a very interesting, good, and dynamic question. You are choosing an MBA because for various reasons. First of all, the MBA by default is the Masters of Business Administration. And by default, you need to cover it on a 360 degree approach. So in other words, although you're becoming a specialist in a particular subset of hospitality, and by hospitality, I don't mean hotels only, I mean the notion of hospitality as a service, uh, it actually allows you to understand and appreciate the dynamics of the business. And by business, it means different industries and transferable skills. Also, the histories of the MBAs, although in a very Anglo-Saxon terminology, they are always questioned, and that comes really from a very public university perspective. But in a real go or the MBA as a qualification is highly respected and highly admired. And as a result of that, it means they are more versatile in terms of skills and applicability. That means that we throw them in so many scenarios and ideas, not only in a specialist area, that they can be able really, depending on what is going to face them, pandemic, no pandemic, crisis, not crisis, that the students can be able really to cope with pressure and understanding really the fast things around them. So it's not the specialist that gives them the success, is really the applicability of 360 different types of skills that they need to apply in different scenarios. And the MBA, actually, those are the skills that we showcase. Right, and if I Thank may you. add, if I may add uh, Dr. Diamante, is an MBA is highly valuable by the industry as well, because it is addressed to executive officers. It is addressed to those who will get involved with uh, the happenings, they will open strategy, they will be in position to uh, reposition everything according to the information which flows in. And it also helps the entrepreneurial side of things. So if someone wants to launch his own business or start thinking of his own business, he is in position to aim better by considering all the surrounding reality and uh, the stakeholders. Thank you, Agustinos. Um, one last question since we're running out of time. Um, I will pick the one. Um, is it is there are there more individual projects or group projects and uh, is it usually big classrooms or small classrooms? Yeah, everything is actually niche driven, accreditation driven. What we need to assess the students is in two angles: individual performance and group performance. So, in other words, every course on average has three assessments an individual project, a group project, and an exam type of assignment. Now, and it's not only about the grades, but be able really to communicate your ideas to a multicultural group of people, to motivate them to achieve the similar kind of goal, and to really perform together by going outside your comfort zone. In the world of hospitality, it's only also about that. It's not only about the cultural mindset that everybody has, be able to really to transfer this cultural mindset in a cross-cultural environment. So the group projects are important and that actually quite that's actually what the industry is seeking in this day and age. So ultimately uh, the projects are divided depending on individual and group performances. Uh, but beyond that we also try to ask them to reflect. So the study trips they also have a credit and uh, and that will also mean that there are actually individual projects and individual reflections around the study trips. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so before we wrap up, I would like to inform you, in case you're not aware of that, uh, we've been organizing these information sessions for all the programs uh, that are taught at La Roche this week. And since we know that it might take you some time uh, to maybe think about questions you would have for potential students, for example, we've organized another opportunity for you to ask questions. So next week, same day of the week and same time as this current session, you will be able to um, join a Q&A live on Instagram to talk to, potential, to, talk to our current students. Um, so you can find all the information on our website. I've shared this in the chat of this uh, webinar. You can see also the dates 
of, um, of these uh, Instagram lives on the slide uh, in front of you. And if you want to catch up on previous programs presentations that took place during this week, I also you will also see the URL on this uh, on this slide. Don't hesitate to watch the recordings. We'll make them available uh, as soon as the sessions are over, maybe uh, a couple of days to put them online. But uh, next week, you'll find all the recordings on the website. So um, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Thank you very much uh, to all of you um, for joining this webinar. Thank you to our great panelists. Thank you, Dr. Dimitrios, Agustinos, Johnny, and uh, Patrick. Um, and uh, reach out to us, send us any questions you might have. You can uh, always uh, reach out via our social media or send us emails, especially if it's linked to graduate programs, via our email address, graduate.programs at leroche.edu. That's it for us. So thank you very much and uh, hopefully see you soon. Goodbye. I would like to thank, thank you, you very much. Diana as well. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.